Ireland's smallest county, Louth is affectionately referred to as the Wee County, and it derives its name from Lu, the great pagan god of the ancient Celts. Situated on the northeast coast, the county enjoys wonderful views of the mountains and sea, and is home to the northeast's two principal towns. Steeped in legend and lore, Louth was part of the ancient kingdom of Oriel, the mystical domain in which many mythological tales are based. Indeed, it was around the north of the county and in the Cooley Peninsula that the legends of Cuchulain were set. One of Ireland's most famous historical heroes, Cuchulain took central stage in the story of the cattle raid of Cooley, one of the great Celtic myths. Modern-day County Louth is home to some of Ireland's most talented designers, craftsmen and women. The area is fast becoming known as an area of excellence for craft, art and design. From the sophistication of handmade silks to the charm of beautiful hand-formed ceramics, the talent of Louth's craft makers excels. In various pockets of the county, they work their magic to produce a spectacular variety of gems. This assortment of inspired techniques creates ceramics, jewellery, hand knits, textiles, wood, metal and a wealth of exclusive products making the shopping experience extremely enjoyable for those seeking gifts or simply to indulge in fine craft. In Drogheda, Millmount Craft Centre is wonderfully suited to those who practice their craft under the shadow of the medieval mound of Millmount. Here we meet Mel Bradley, a designer of hand-painted silks. 25 years ago I started painting on silk. That was after I had completed a four-year degree course in the National College of Art in Dublin, doing specialising in fashion and textiles. But I wanted to stay in Ireland and there was really no industry, so I really was forced to come up with some sort of method of uh, putting uh, a design on fabric um, that didn't involve silk screens and all the washout areas, which, are, which were very expensive at the time. So, Basically, I managed to teach myself how to paint on silk from then. And from then it just grew and grew. I got, uh, uh, we started to go to, which is now called Showcase. It was the craft show way back then. And I started to get orders from craft shops and did very simple little scarves for around the neck, and which grew and grew and grew. And now I do big, huge wraps and shawls. And we did an awful lot of uh, corporate work for our lingus, for um, Guinnesses, for you name it, Baileys, um, for the Mounted Police. I remember one year we, the Canadian Mounted Police came over and we did a hundred scarves for them. And then about ten years ago I started working with fashion designers and that became very interesting because suddenly I was forced to um, develop hand painting even a little bit more uh, because I was asked to do things that I hadn't even tried before. So. That has been very successful. We started with doing big wraps for people like Louise Kennedy and John Russia, and then, then we started to do lengths of fabric that they turned into beautiful garments on, on the catwalk. So that's been very successful. The basic techniques of painting on silk are extremely simple. Um, we have a resist that we call, it's a bit, works a bit like batik in wax and batik, but it's called gutta and it's, um, it's a rubberized kind of, um, it's kind of like a glue. And we put that on the silk to create our design. And that's an outline. And that outline will stop the dye spreading further on the silk. Because if you put a piece of water or a piece of dye on the silk, the first thing that's going to happen is it's just going to bleed everywhere. Um, so that's the first thing we do. And then basically it's a bit can be a bit like painting by numbers after that and that's basically when we did corporate scarves years ago that's exactly how it was because you know I had six staff working for me and the colours were all worked out all the recipes were all worked out and they had to be put in a certain place at a certain time and that was how we managed to get hundreds of scarves that all looked like the same thing even though they were all individually hand painted. Now I actually very rarely use the substance called gutta anymore because I have um, started to be more free and more creative and now I actually use a hairdryer and I put on the dye and with a hairdryer in my hand I control how the dye spreads on the fabric. Inspiration in my work comes from just about everything that uh, is created in the natural world. Uh, I live in Lake Town in County Meath and I'm right beside the beach, uh, it's a two minute walk to the beach 
don't have a sea view just yet, but um, every day I walk the beach with, with my dog and it's just amazing the amount of um, beautiful shapes and colours that are there and they change every single day. I have always loved flowers, of course, and uh, you can see that comes through in my work very, very much. My recent work has definitely been inspired by the, the sea and seaweed and a lot of the kind of light and more three-dimensional structures that I have done recently are definitely sea-related. Sea In recent years, I have actually slimmed down my home product line because I now actually am working on my own and uh, so therefore I don't produce as much as I used to. So I don't actually sell in craft shops anymore. But I do sell in our, we have a small craft shop here in Millmount, called Millmount Design Store, where you can find some of my uh, painted scarves. And they're also available in Loud Craft Mark Shop uh, in the, at the High Lanes Gallery. For anybody wishing to start in a craft business, my advice to them would be, first of all, to do an awful lot of market research, because it is vital to know that what you're actually making is actually going to sell. The other thing I would advise people is to try and just do all your market research, look at what's around, but do something individual to yourself.